Hey everybody, Jen Cravasi here at Jekyll Bates. We're out here at the spray bench in the shop, except we're not really spraying right now. Um, just finished editing and it's producing right now. I've got a spray session going on. Uh, you guys will probably see that before you see this, but I got super, super fantastic response from the acrylic pour that I did. So I'm doing another one. I catalog all of them, but I don't really give tutorials because I haven't ever really felt like I've mastered this yet but i do have a lot of fun doing it and i'm usually fairly successful with the getting the cells to open up and i'm pretty decent with mixing so the mix is these are blick studio acrylic paints it's a medium bodied acrylic paint it's all most most of the stuff you're going to get with artistic paint is water based so i've poured the colors that i want into clean cups various sizes various levels and my mixing spray or my mixing ingredients rather are this floetrol it's flood floetrol it's used normally in the painting industry P people that paint houses and do remods and renovations use it to control the level of flow it also makes the paint their gallon of paint go a lot further and it also smooths out their roller lines we apply it in the art world for pretty much the same thing. It makes your paint last a little bit longer, it thins it down while it doesn't separate the pigment. So it holds the pigment, uh, which is what you want it to do. And it also thins it out a little bit, makes your, makes your paint last a little bit longer. So the mixture that I have used is gonna be 35% paint, 35% Floetrol and 30% give or take um, on water. The water, it can really thin out quickly and if you're using acrylics that aren't as good or less expensive, a lot of the times the pigments will break apart and you'll lose that beautiful color that you want when you add too much water. It also makes everything mud. It turns all of your colors into the same color when you're trying to move them across your canvas. So the key is I apply the same thing to this as I do with fishing. With fishing, buy better gear. It'll last longer. You'll be happier. Same in the art world. Buy better paints. You'll be happier. They'll last longer. A little paint goes a lot further when it's got good pigment in it. So today, I'm just going to be doing basically ocean colors. Maybe call this a Cancun sunset on the ocean. We'll see. I'm not going to be using my red and orange in this first acrylic. It's an 11 by 14. It's a level one, which I normally use better canvases. But in this, for, for the instance that I'm doing, I'm just kind of testing out a couple of different things. I have added to my blue and my greens. So this color that color and that color i've added just a little bit of a metallic fw ink looks like that it is a liquid acrylic ink super thin super shiny it's got uh, like the talc glitter and it's heavy glitter um, looks really good i've used it before with moderate success I'm trying to mess around with the formula a little bit i can't give you an exact formula until i figure it out myself so but in these three, I do have some metallics. Other than that, I've thinned down some white for use in the painting. I've got a little bit thicker white that I'm gonna add as a base to the canvas. It's off to the side, it's off camera right now. And we're gonna get started here. So I've already mixed my paints. I did that off camera. I've let them set. And the reason that you let them set is you want those air bubbles to come up. If you have air bubbles in your paint, it's gonna, it's gonna convey to your canvas. And then you have to figure out how to get rid of them. And sometimes they just sit there and they pit your canvas. They pit that little piece of paint that they're in. You can burn them off if, if you're using the culinary torch, but that's just more of a pain in the butt. And it's a longer period of time that you've got a flame to your acrylic. And I don't like that. If I have to use my flame on the culinary torch, I want it to be for cell separation and opening up those cells. So, but sometimes you don't even need to do that. So we're gonna see how this turns out today. I'm going to mix this on camera and let's get started. I think that's enough tutorial. Let's see what happens. 
I'm only going to use one large cup today and we're going to mix this. Now I have added, I've sprayed in a little bit of this treadmill 100% silicone which is what most of us use. Uh, you can, there's a lot of different things that you can use and you can look those up online but you can use everything from WD-40 which is a, it's not 100% silicone so it leaves a really nasty residue that you got to clean off afterwards. This stuff is probably the best on the market for use like this. Um, it's the go-to and it's also the most reasonably and modest priced. Uh, there are art specific silicones that you can get but they're usually two or three times the price of this treadmill. This is a belt lubricant. It's used for you know your, your, your gym type equipment but we use it for this as well. So I sprayed this cup right here with uh, a little bit and that's to help move the paint out so it's got a little bit of silicone along the lining to each of these I'm going to add about four drops of silicone which should give us some nice big cells hopefully they won't fall apart on me they didn't in the last one but we're just gonna see how that goes add it to every color that I'm using. I have a couple colors back here that you don't see. And we'll bring that up. One more drop in there. And now we're going to get ready to pour it into the cup. Got my silicone in there. Give that a rough mix. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And let me get two more popsicle sticks, which is what I'm using today. Usually when I'm mixing paints, I don't get the... Um, the real expensive thicker ones I have some of those but if I'm just doing a small piece and I'm not going to be pouring all day I'll just use these little thin ones and we'll get it going in there as well the consistency what is my consistency going to be when I'm pouring well I'm going to show you let's get this up here you can see that steady stream that is the consistency you guys want to get to you don't want too much thinner you still want to feel a little bit of resistance when you're moving this paint stick through it so normally the bottom color in your cup is going to be the color that's on top because you're flipping this upside down just on a traditional flip cup method so for this one i'm going to want white and black to cover all the rest of these because that's going to, in theory, that's going to affect the way the painting looks and it's going to provide a little bit more shading, if that makes sense. So it, it should really stand out. And usually white is the thickest of them all. Not too much black, folks only because it's such an aggressive color, it will blend into everything. And then I'm just gonna randomly add my colors until I have a consistency that I like. And as much paint as I think I need to handle coverage on an 11 by 14 canvas. And you can kinda slice the paint through these as you go or you can just pour straight into the middle that part is completely up to you guys add a little more white again Now the purples and the blues will blend against these yellows, which is another reason you don't want the paint too thin because like I said earlier, 
if you get your, your paint too thin, what's going to happen is it's all going to turn to mud and it's going to try and congregate as one color. And it's going to look like doo-doo. It's not what you want. Now before I get to anything else, I've got some blue that's back here hiding in the back of the frame that I pre-mixed and this already has silicone so I don't need it in a cup. I know it's the right consistency. I'm going to do a little spiral of this and I'll probably add one more portion. Now I'm going to add just a tiny bit of black. Matter of fact, let's do it this way. You can better control it if you just bring it out on a stick. And you can do stuff on one side. I mean, it's really, it's really a random method. If you're just doing a standard flip cup pour. Now there are different techniques. There's the Dutch method, there's swiping pours, there's spirals, there's tree rings, there's a hundred different types of pouring and swipes that you can do. And they're cool. I mean like I, I, I love, there's so many artists. I could get lost and not do a thing all day if I just sat and watched people on YouTube do their thing. The last thing that I want to do is show you guys what this is looking like. And you see how the white is getting pushed up because it's on the bottom. It's being pushed up, but I'm also noticing that my black is kind of bleeding into it. So I want to be really careful about how much black I end up putting in the rest of this. Go back to our white here. Give that a little bit higher pour to get that back down on the bottom. That's what gravity's for. A little more blue. Let's try and get all these colors. I, I really want to end up with about 50% paint in this cup. That's the goal. If you guys want to fast forward through the rest of this, that's fine as well. Now I'm kind of using paint to cut through. Some people will take their swipe stick and cut through once or twice. If they want to get a certain effect. That's stuff that you guys can just play with and you should. You guys should be playing with that stuff. If you're interested in doing this, there's nothing more fun to me than experimentation. Um, that's probably 80% of what I've done over the years with airbrushing. Oh, airbrushing can be used in these sorts of pores as well. Um, a lot of people use hair dryers to kind of blow and they use straws. I mean, there's just, there's a multitude of things that you guys can do with this particular method of painting. It's very abstract. It's a whole lot of fun. And it's a good stress reliever. At least for me it is. Must have got a little purple in there. Go back to this. And remember I said that my blues and my green that I have have got a little bit of metallic in them. I'm going to throw a little more black into this. Just because that's the kind of girl I am. We should have a pretty fun pour with this. And we're just about at the level that I'm looking for, for an 11 by 14. These cups, I believe I got them at Walmart. Let's finish that up, hit this green. Come back with some white. 
the swipe. And you can see that this is heavier because it's kind of cutting right through. So another thing that we're going to do now, because of that, because it's sinking, is we're going to put our canvas up and we're going to add some pre-white. Oh, what fun it is to mix with some liquid acrylic paints. I'm going to turn you guys off just for a second so I can set up my canvas. Okay, now all I've done here is add some white. It's a premix. There's my premix. 33% paint, 33%. Uh, this is actually um, clear glue, Elmer's glue all, and 33% water. That's it. Bring it over my torch because we're going to need that. And here is the cup. Ready, set, flip. And I'm seeing some gorgeous cells already. I'm going to try and stay out of the shadows. I've got light coming from all directions in this shop. It's not really set up to do this type of stuff yet. But if you guys really like it, then I'll try and get some additional lighting for y'all. Um, I'll do what I can do if you guys like this kind of stuff. I do. I love doing it. I love painting. Period. These are some really good cells setting up. And the reason that I leave this tipped and leave it alone for a second is so the paint can come out. Now, I already said that I sprayed it, so I don't have a lot of paint stuck to the bottom like I normally would. That's a bonus. It also adds a little bit more silicone to it. So if I really want tons of cells, the only problem is if you get too much silicone in it, then it's gonna give you super big cells. They're all gonna break apart and you're gonna be like, oh, bummer. So that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is something super cool. Let's pull it up. I'm just gonna finish this and it kind of looks like the ocean that's what we were hoping for a little bit of sea spray love the colors can't really see a whole lot of yellow in this but we're gonna let this spread out do its thing but I do like how it's setting up so far pretty happy with that. I'm going to give it just a little bit more time to set up. I might add a little bit more white paint over here because the object is we really just want this paint to flow off the sides. Because really all we want is for the paint to cover the edges so that it allows this to spread off the sides. That's the goal in a painting like this is that you want it to go completely off of the canvas in all directions, including your corners. Uh, what I what I might even end up doing is bringing my palette knife down and just pushing the corners. Sometimes you can paint it. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it to help it run off the edge. But I don't know if you guys hear this. So I picked that tip up from airbrushing. A lot of my airbrush paints, especially the Wicked line, the Createx Wicked line, have metal BBs in the in the cans of paint, the jars or bottles of paint, and that helps to keep the the paint at a good mix when you're shaking it. 
just like you would find in a paint store when they when they put it in the shaker. So I'm using regular play marbles, glass marbles that you would find in a toy section or arts and crafts. I like the round ones because they kind of act like uh, ball bearings, and they don't uh, they don't rust. Glass doesn't rust, so that's a little tip for you guys. So this is settled for just a couple of minutes here. I think what I may do is grab a brush real quick. And I've got one that I've opened up that uh, I'm just going to pour a little paint in the bottom of this cup here. I'm going to go ahead and paint my edges. And that's just going to, again, the whole goal is to make sure that you cover your sides and your corners. You want to get all that done. Just make sure that everything pours off of the canvas in all directions. That is a big goal. The other thing that I've done with this canvas, because you want it to breathe, it, it takes forever to dry if it doesn't breathe. So I've got this on just regular push pins. I've got four of them, one in each corner, and they're the same height, so I don't have to worry about leveling. I, do, I always level my table before I start and do all that stuff off camera to make sure that my when this stuff sets, it's going to set evenly. And I'll just make sure I've got that covered. It's got paint on it. Good to go with that. Let me pull that off to the corners, pull that off to the corners, because this is all going to disappear when you start rotating this canvas to the corners. And there we go. That's the hardest part to get to come off of the canvas when you're tilting. So there we go. Now, I think we're ready to start moving some paint around. I don't see right off hand where I'm gonna to need to open up too many cells because there's a lot of that already, but we'll, We'll just give it a little bit of heat. I see some air bubbles in here that I want to get rid of. Go away, air bubbles. Go away. All right. The other key to this is tilting very slowly. You want to try and keep the integrity of the cells that you have and sometimes it all turns to poo hopefully this won't and a lot of that has to do with learning paint consistency you don't want to lose too much off the sides if you really like how the cells are setting up so again just paint consistency, not getting your paint too thin, not losing too much. I'm going to bring that back and work with that later. Not stretching them out too much either. That's another thing. I'm going to try and come down here. real slow angle this is a really cool one so far Let's see if we can keep it cool
the other thing is you want to make sure your paint slides off. You want to lose a little bit of paint because if it's too thick when it lays on this canvas, it doesn't dry properly. So there's a lot of things that can influence how your canvas turns out or doesn't turn out. But most of it's dependent on the, the skill level. A lot of it's a learning curve. For me it is, for sure. Um, huge learning curve. Going from watercolors and airbrushing. I've painted on canvases for years. Come on, get on off of there. There you go. This is beautiful. This might be one of my faves so far. Need to keep that paint from running onto my carpet here. Don't want that to happen. That would be bad. As your painting sits, it's gonna it's gonna continue to drip. I apologize, I am wearing a hat. It keeps my hair out of the way. Y'all know I have long hair. You guys can probably see my hat. Maybe not. But you want to just scoop the paint off of the bottom of your painting. into there. I am just beyond stoked at how this came out. Really happy. Just a little bit right there. I might have scraped too much when I was trying to pull the... I did one thing off camera that unfortunately resulted in me scraping just the edge. You can't see it on the top, but I want, I need to come back and, because gravity will still move the paint around a little bit, but yeah, just pull with a palette knife, or if you don't have a palette knife, use a butter knife. Use the flat edge of your butter knife. And that'll really help out a good bit there so this is what we got today let me um let me bring you guys down off of the tripod and show you around the painting a little bit and I just realized when I took this down off of the tripod that you guys were getting a nasty glare like right there I am so sorry about that um, I'll try and get some some better lighting so, and yeah, you got a glare from that side too. So yeah, I'm not set up for pores in the studio. I'm set up for airbrushing, which is what I do for a living. I'm an airbrush artist and an airbrush paint design person. So this is what we got today though, kids. Let's, uh, let's see what kind of angles. Let me get this out of here. set this move this across here wow this turned out cool wow this turned out this is really cool this is one of my faves so far and I've done I've done a bunch I mean it's not a bunch I'm, obviously I'm just starting out but for me this that's a bunch um, I've got some really good level three canvases that I'm excited to start using and um, wow folks look at this look at some of the contrast and colors that just set up by themselves This is beautiful. Couldn't ask for better. I like this top bit too. Love the colors there. So I'm gonna show you guys this about, uh, probably in about three or four days when it's completely dry. And then it'll be another couple of days, if not a week before I varnish it. I did get a little yellow to pop out there. I was afraid I wouldn't. I was afraid it was just gonna mix in with the blue. 
and go green on me, but I got it. Awesome, you guys. Thanks for checking it out. Peace, love, and art. Three days later.